Pop Talker. We stay on that music note. It's been generating a lot of buzz. It was teased as a major announcement in a news conference outside of Brown Stadium with the mayor in attendance. And the news was Billy Joel and Rod Stewart will be together in a joint performance here in Cleveland. That will happen in September. I love how you said it because it sounded like it's a major award. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a major well, announcement. They pumped it up. as it, I th I'm afraid that when you say that these days and you say it's around music, I think a lot of folks were thinking or at least hoping, is Taylor Swift Taylor coming Swift. to town? Mm -hmm. I think so, too. So our very own music enthusiast, Mike Polk Jr., you know he has a few thoughts on this uh, announcement and how it was handled and really what it means for our city. Hey folks, well after days of expectation building and speculation regarding the details of a huge forthcoming concert at Cleveland Brown Stadium, a group of local dignitaries including Mayor Justin Bibb and bigwigs from the Haslam Sports Group, Destination Cleveland, the Rock Hall and more, converged for a much anticipated press conference to make the reveal. Given the hype leading up to this and the importance of the people in attendance, we knew this concert had to be big, right? Would it be a modern Cleveland version of 1985's Live Aid featuring every currently popular musical act converging together at once? Did some Cleveland Clinic researchers manage to clone Mozart? And would Wolfgang himself appear at the podium to announce that he'd be launching his upcoming tour from Cleveland out of appreciation? Nope, turns out it was this. I'm excited to announce that the piano man, Billy Joel and Rod Stewart We'll be coming to Cleveland on Friday, September 13th. Hey, it's Billy and Rod. They're no strangers to town, of course. Billy Joel last played in Cleveland in 2017. Rod Stewart played Blossom less than two years ago. But now they're coming together. And that was the announcement. All right, let's get this out of the way first. This is great. It's great for the city. These guys are genuine legends, and I personally love them. Billy Joel was actually my very first concert. I saw him as a child at Richfield Coliseum. Still have the ticket. This isn't about whether or not this will be a good show. This is about the importance of expectation setting in all aspects of life. A press conference of this magnitude should not be used to announce that two 106.5 The Lake adult contemporary artists who perform here fairly regularly will be coming here again, but together nine months from now. It's inarguably good news, but I'm sorry, you guys, you just overhyped it. Now, of course, hype can be useful, even pivotal, when utilized properly. There's nothing wrong with getting people excited about things or celebrating when something cool, like this concert, comes together. It only becomes an issue when the hype that is employed is not proportional to the results of said hype. When these two factors fail to align, it's only natural that some people are going to feel let down, as seems to be the case following yesterday's announcement. But in closing, I just want to be clear that I'm by no means dismissing the accomplishment of landing this concert for the city or the talent of either of these two legends. As I said, I've been a Billy Joel fan. For the longest time. And I'm not trying to act like some big shot. I'm just saying that by hyping up the announcement in advance, the organizers placed a lot of unnecessary pressure on themselves. Why did they do it? Don't ask me why. But they did. Or maybe you think I'm being unfair. And who knows? You may be right. But even if you are upset with me right now and consider this criticism a bit petty, that's okay. Want to know why? I love you just the way you are. Well, here we are. That's the scene of the crime. Upcoming, September. That's going to be a big show, obviously. But maybe that was a little bit overhyped, you guys. Can we agree on that? I mean, the nice thing about hearing about that Justin Timberlake thing was that it came as a complete surprise this morning. Now, if they would have built up to that over the last week, talking about how, hey, we're going to tell you something. It's going to be huge. And then all of a sudden, it's Justin Timberlake. That's still cool, but it's not as cool as just all of a sudden finding out that Justin Timberlake's coming to town, you know? I think it's a matter of when you were born based on how big that announcement was based on my very small sampling size. Those in the newsroom that let's say are under the age of 35 heard that announcement mm -hmm. and were like, wait a minute, who, who is Rod Stewart and is Billy Joel still playing? But if you were over say 45, you were thrilled to hear that these two iconic legends are going to team up and do a show. The problem is people just expect Taylor Swift. <laughs> that's there's tr that's you true. Think, Mike? In this Taylor Swift world that we live in, you guys, with we're, we're all just living in her world. When you make an announcement like that, that's going to be the natural assumption. And I think they dropped the ball here. But I'm still excited about the concert, and, and I'm definitely going to try and sneak in. And just so you know, we love you just the way you are. Just too. the way you are, Mike Polk. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs> Very well done. Creative use of less than seven seconds of a song to avoid licensing <laughs> fees. Awesome. Street legal, you guys. Street legal. <laughs> Very tricky. Thank you, Polk. <laughs>
So listen, we're going to be giving you the opportunity to win premium seats to the show here. Every night, next week on What's Next, you just have to watch for the nightly code word and enter it on WKYC.com backslash contest. That'll give you your chance to win. And we're going to pick the grand prize winner and five runners up on Monday, February 5th.